Hey guys, Avi here and welcome to part 3 in getting started with Python. Now we left off where we talked about some basic Python structure, what variables are, how they work, and now it's time to move on to arithmetic operators. So if you don't see this right now, just open up PyCharm. If you go to the bottom left hand side, look in your menu and you should see Python console. Select that and you should see this nice big console right over here. For the time being, we'll be working in this until we start writing more extensive code. All right, so let's get started. Now, hopefully you've dealt with arithmetic operators before, maybe in algebra, geometry, wherever you learned them in math, and they're very simple. You have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus, all right? Now, I'm pretty sure you know what these arithmetic operators are, but today I'm gonna to be talking about how they apply to variables. So let's say we have two friends, all right? One's age is 12 and the other is 18. So let's go ahead and create two variables. One's going to be age one, and that's gonna be equal to 12. And the other is going to be age two, and that's going to be equal to 18, all right? So now we have two variables, age one and age two. And in this video, in this lecture, we're just gonna talk about how we can manipulate them. What can we do with these variables? Well, since they're integers, they're numbers, we can use the arithmetic operators of Python to play around. So I can say, for example, if I wanna know what's the sum of both of these people, I can say age one plus age two. All right, exactly, 30, 12 plus 18. Let's go ahead and try subtraction. So I wanna find out what age one minus age two is. I get negative six, fantastic. Let's go ahead and try out the rest. We have multiplication, and for multiplication, instead of our normal x, which we denote as times, we'll be using the asterisk. The asterisk is shift eight on your keyboard. That's what, that's what normally denotes multiplication in most programming languages. So age one into age two, that gets us 216. Let's go ahead and say age one divided by age two, that gives us 0 0.66. And again, the divided is the forward slash. And then we're gonna talk about modulus. So modulus is basically a function that gives you the remainder. For example, we did age one divided by age two over here and we got a decimal, right? If we don't want the exact answer and instead we want the remainder, we can use the modulus. So let's try it out. Let's go ahead and say age two percent age one. Again, using the percent sign, we get six. And if we try age 1% age 2, we get 12, all right? So that's basically the remainder. If you divide age 2 by age 1, what's the remainder? 6. And if you divide age 1 by age 2, what's the remainder? 12. It's by itself. All right, now that we've finished talking about arithmetic operators, let's go ahead and move on to strings. Now, we've dealt with strings before. We know what sentence is, how to create them, the print hello world. Those quotation marks, the content inside those quotation marks are strings, okay? So let's go ahead and say sentence one is equal to um, today was a beautiful day, okay? Um, a very simple sentence can be anything you want and that's it. So what we have here is sent one is a string. That's its data type. We know that integers, age one, age two, they're the numbers strings are the things in quotation marks, the words, the characters. So let's go ahead and test out the operators we've learned with these strings. Suppose I have a first name and last name variable, okay? And my goal was to add them together to get my full name. Let's go ahead and try that out in Python. Well, first we need our first name variable. First name is equal to Avi or Avi Nash. And then we need our last name variable last name is equal to Jane, all right? You can do the same for yourself, first name, last name, and now it comes to add them together, to concatenate them. And it's just like we learned with arithmetic operators. Age one plus age two, first name plus last name. And what do we get? Avinash Jane, except there's no gap. And honestly, if there is no gap, it looks very crude. So let's go ahead and add a small gap gap in between. We can do this multiple ways, but an easy way is just to say first name plus a space plus the last name. And that gives us a gap between Avinash and Jane. 
all right? So just like we could add integers, add these numbers up over here, you can add strings the exact same way. Now, I'm pretty sure you're wondering, well, can you subtract them? No, you can't, I'm sorry. You can try first name minus last name, and we get an error. You can't subtract a string and a string because that doesn't make sense. However, what you can do is multiply a string with an integer. Suppose I wanted to list out hi 10 times, all right? I have my string hi, and I'd like to list this out 10 times. Let's go ahead and say hi into 10, and we get hi 10 times. That's how you can use our strings with the arithmetic operators that we've learned. Now, hopefully you can think about it. Division doesn't work with strings and modulus doesn't work either. But the two operators that you can use are addition, adding two strings together, and multiplication, repeating a string multiple, multiple times. Now, one last thing before we end this video, and this is a really neat concept. Okay, let's go oh, hang with me for a few more moments. I'm gonna create a sentence and it's gonna be a bit long. Um, <coughs> um, I'm gonna say Avinash was playing basketball, okay? And this is my sentence. I have a string, it's a sentence, and all I want is my name, okay? I don't want was, I don't want playing, I don't want basketball, I don't want the gaps in between. All I want is my name. This is where a really neat feature of Python comes in. Every character gets an index, okay? Every character of a string in Python gets an index. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, all right, so this must be one, V must be two, I must be three, N must be four, and so on. Well, in programming languages, that doesn't happen. Instead, the indexes start from zero. So what I want you to think is, in this case, A is zero, B is one, I is two, N is three, and so on. So all the indexes that you currently think about, subtract one from them. So suppose I want the first character, all right? Let's go ahead and say sentence, and then in square brackets, go ahead and put the integer zero. This basically means get me the character at index zero, and I get A, all right? What we're doing here is we're doing a, a, a function known as splicing. We're taking our string and we're getting a specific segment of it, splicing our string. Suppose I want to get the fifth character. I know that the fifth character is actually four in terms of our index. So I can say sentence four is a, the lowercase a right over here. Now let's go ahead and talk about how do we get all of the seven characters. We don't want one, we don't want one, 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 one. We want all seven of them. Well, we can do that again through splicing. We can say sentence, and then in square brackets, we wanna start from the very beginning, zero, and then we wanna go all the way up to character seven. So let's go ahead and try this out first. Zero to seven. What do we get? We get Avinash. Fantastic. Now I know what you're thinking. We started off at zero, which made sense, but shouldn't the seventh character have been the space over here? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Except with splicing, you have to remember that when you do this sort of splice, when you take a initial position and an ending position, Python doesn't count the ending position, all right? So when you actually say from zero to seven, Python is actually splicing from zero to six. So if I try saying sentence zero to six, I'm only going to get Avinas. I'm not gonna get the H at the end. So this is just one of various things you can do with splicing. You can say sentence, if I wanna get, I don't know, let's see, from, I wanna get the first three, I can say colon three. If I wanna get maybe, ne you can use negative numbers too. I could say sentence, um, colon negative two, and I'll get everything but the last two characters. So splicing is definitely useful in Python. You can take any string and you can get a specific segment out of it, a specific splice. All right, let's do a quick recap of what we learned. We started off with the mathematical operators. We have plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulus. Remember, modulus is remainder. We then moved on to strings, and we understood that you can apply two of these arithmetical operators to strings, a 
addition and multiplication, and then last but not least, we learned about splicing. We learned that every character has an index, and the index actually starts from zero. So the first character is zero, second is one, and so on. And then we learned that we can get a segment of the string, numerous characters, by using a format like this. Your first position, colon, your last position, plus one. Because remember, Python doesn't count the last index when you put in for the splice. All right, guys, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'll see you in the next lecture.